I'm Wandell. And I'm Joyce Farrell. And we're here to uh, talk through a script that illustrates how ICIT 3D and ICIT Bio work together to analyze the way images are uh, imaged on the back of the retina and then encoded by the uh, cone mosaic. So we're going to use the tools in ICIT Bio and, so, and uh, ICIT 3D. Uh, usually these scripts open up with just a little bit of a check that you've got the right path and that we initialize things and that you have Docker configured and all these things are explained on the wiki page. But these are just technical checks that everything is okay. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go get ourselves a picture of uh, a white room. It's actually not just a picture, but it's um, 3D graphics. And I already ran this. This is just to load in a white room and um, uh, the picture of the white room. And let me just show you what that looks like. Where'd you get the room, white room? Thanks. That's the white room. Uh, is a uh, image, a PBRT image that was shared by the folks who make these graphics images. And this is a quick little rendering of it here. It took about, I don't know, 10 or 15 seconds, I think, for this. And this rendering of it is, uh, you know, part of the package that we have with ISA 3D. It's something that we, um, it's something that we uh, do routinely now. And it's really, a, this image here, it's actually, a, remember, it's a spectral represent. This, this image is a representation of the spectral data that's in, inside there. Here I'm showing you that it's a high dynamic range image. Um, it's, it's quite bright and quite dark as you scan across a line like this. Um, but also, it, the image is actually, um, you know, got units of uh, spectral radiance. So here it's got wavelength. Mm -hmm. And this is how many... Uh, photons per second versus the radiance and so forth. So it's an actual spectral radiance description of the scene. And we use PBRT as the main um, lecture described is to uh, go and make this make this thing. The other thing that we get out of, out of this that's kind of cool and useful for many other purposes is because it's a uh, computer graphics scene, we actually get the whole depth map. Mm -hmm. So you can see this is in meters and uh, the part that I'm going to be interested in is um, kind of this region back here. There's a depth map, so the window's a little further away. The chair is here. Uh, you see the chair is about five meters away. And um, this part here is closer. It's about two meters away and so forth. But we, we can go uh, do a lot of work with scenes where we know the depth, we know the radiance, and that's an important part of what ISO 3D does is, mm -hmm. is go create scenes like this. So it, this is um, the scene radiance that's calculated by uh, PBRT. It is. Um, with instructions from ISO 3D. That's right. And then... And, and those instructions are, are actually pretty simple. So we kind of load in the PBRT files. Mm -hmm. And because we wanted the scene, we just said, you know, use pinhole optics. Mm -hmm. Just set that to true and to make it fast, right? Yeah, yeah. that makes it fast. And then we also say how many rays we want to, from every pixel in the image, how many rays. And, you know, this isn't a big number. It's a good number, but not a big number. And then uh, this this is that um, I set 3D object that we call the scene I. And so we, we then tell it, go ahead, render the scene. Mm -hmm. And it produced it. And here's the I set bio scene object. In fact, I can just say it's a, Scene, it's a struct in ISET Bio. The scenes are structs and they've got data and so forth, and that's what's shown here. And we put it up in this window. And you have the illuminate too, right? There is, uh, there's an implicit illuminate for this, for this thing, which we can plot it in terms of energy. It's a D65 illuminate, mm -hmm. so yeah, uh, we have that, that represented there too. And we have lots of scenes, not, not a bazillion, but you know, mm -hmm. I don't know, 25 complex scenes. And we can change the position of the camera. We can change um, the, you know, what we're looking at, uh, the field of view and so forth. Mm -hmm. And so that really is uh, the original scene. Anyway, I was, I, we put this scene up, having a look at it. And I thought, well, you know what's interesting? I, I kind of wonder this region over here, you can see this is really bright. This, this happens all the time. There's a bright window over here. Then there's a chair, and then there's a dark pillow. Mm -hmm. So I thought, well, 
you know, what happens if I look to here and I look to here? You know, if I move back, move back and forth, mm -hmm. if I'm fixating over here, or I put it a little in the periphery, mm -hmm. um, you know, what is happening at my cone uh, photoreceptor excitations? What does my, the rest of my brain have to do to handle the inputs from that region there? So I said, okay, let's focus. Let's go, go in there. And I turned the optics on. So, so now you're going to calculate the irradiance image. This that's is the right. scene radiance right Perfect. now. That's right. Okay. That's right. This is the scene radiance. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to say, I tell you what, calculate all the way through. Because I kind of, that this is fast to look at. Mm -hmm. But to, to go from the scene radiance uh, through the optics uh, of the eye. And the, the model we're going to use here is actually the um, Navarro eye model. We have a few. Mm -hmm. We have the Legrand Gulstrand model, and we've got the Navarro model, and we've got the Arizona eye model. But but by default, it comes this comes cool. up with the Navarro model. And I set the spatial sampling, and uh, we left the number. We, you know, we still are using this many. And and then I was interested in, in looking over here, and that was remember five meters away. So I set the accommodation to be you know five di uh, one over five meters. So you know. Point. That's where it's going to be focused. That's that's where the eye is going to be focused, okay. and that's the point. I, I hadn't looked this up, so you know I, I checked in the scene where that point is, and that's the position of that point. And I turned on chromatic aberration. That you know slows things down when you're doing everything, rendering through the optics. But this took about ten minutes to render uh, this way, and, and uh, then I put it up uh, here, and, and I'll show you what that looks like. So now you can see we're kind of focused in over here. And this is, a, again, a representation of the spectral irradiance mm -hmm. at the back of the eye. Mm -hmm. And just like before, you know, just to emphasize that, we can look over here, and um, you can see it's a greenish pillow, and so uh, it's got more energy at the mid-wavelengths and less at the long and mm -hmm. short and so forth. And um, The floor, maybe do the floor. The floor? Okay, mm -hmm. let's try that. Um, the radiance and energy, the floor. Uh, it's a little reddish, mm -hmm. so it's got a little more over there. But again, these are spectral irradiance mm -hmm. terms. And, uh, and you know, it's really a uh, very high dynamic range scene. So if I, for example, uh, I plot the illuminance, let's go vertical, because we'll be able to get the, um, get the window and a dark part here. So I'm going to oh, click about over here, I guess. And you can see, boy, at that window, it's uh, 600 lux in the simulation. And when you get down into the really dark parts, it's very low. And uh, so the dynamic range of the scene is, is really, you know, it's huge. Mm -hmm. And that's not, but it's not an unusual scene, uh, you know, in lots of rooms with windows and dark parts of the scene and mm -hmm. so forth. Mm -hmm. So, you know, even this part here that we're about to uh, look at in detail, um, that's really quite common, a dark mm -hmm. pillow and, a, and, and the window and so forth. So what I did, this is the, um, we're now going to move out of, the, the, all this is ISIP 3D. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, right, we had a, a, a three-dimensional scene model, we, we rendered it, we rendered it all the way through to the... Um, Optical irradiance image, exactly. that's the image falling on the sensor. That's right, in this case. The retina. The, yeah, that's right. In this case, the retina. Though the fact that you mentioned sensor, mm -hmm. it's because you and I often work with actual image sensors. But here, it's going to be on the retina. In fact, let's go build ourselves a retina. Now, I selected a little region here um, uh, from this image, and it's in a, in a little rectangular region here. And I'm going to go prop out the uh, that because because you know this is actually a big region of the retina here, and I'm just going to go crop that that little part and show it. And you can see the pillows over here, and the the window is up here, mm -hmm. and here's the back of the chair, mm -hmm. and we're, we've really zoomed in on this mm -hmm. thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to go have a look. So now we're going to use the other parts of um, I said bio that uh, Dave talked about in his uh, part of the OSA seminar, and uh, we're going to go make ourselves a little cone mosaic. And I put an F to mean it's going to be foveal. And I just made it a little bit. So the, this this field of view of the part I, I, I cropped out, it's a little mm -hmm. more than three degrees. Mm -hmm. So we're going to make the cone mosaic a little bit more than three degrees and make a little short eye movement sequence 
because you know eye movements are part of what we're going to have to deal with. And then I'm going to just go compute uh, what that would look like at the in terms of the cone excitations. So this is real and, time. Huh? Yeah, mm -hmm. if there's a small region like that, it goes pretty quick. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but I didn't want to do a big mm -hmm. one because mm -hmm. you know because time is of the essence here. So then uh, you know when we, when it comes up, you can see that. This first plot here is, is literally just showing, you can see the, the back of this over here, and uh, just a little off the, off, the, um, off the window, it's unfortunate. But let's go look at a vertical line response uh, over here somewhere, and you can see um, that's uh, this bright spot here, which is, you know, in five milliseconds, it looks like we're, we've got more than a thousand photons in here in the dark region. Uh, we've got a very small number of photons. Not just from the specularity. Uh, I seem to have missed the the window. Which so where in the in. image? Uh, where in the optical image are you zooming in? Uh, I thought it was here, and oh, it could okay. be that the eye position. In fact, well, what no, I, it looks like it might be. Yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. But I, I, but I, this part here should be there. Mm -hmm. And um, in fact, let me just show you that the other thing I did was I turned on some. Uh, eye movements. Mm -hmm. So that, that's basically how this thing would be mm -hmm. moving at the back of the eye, according to the very mm -hmm. nice uh, eye movement model that Nicholas Katara has implemented mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. uh, this is, by the way, uh, in in the center of gaze, and the cone mosaic that was simulated for this is um, oh, that's actually pretty big. I shouldn't have taken quite such a big region. That's pretty big, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. this will come up as a cone mosaic. Um, you know, sh show you the density of cones, and you can so see. So, what are we seeing here? If this is not the cone mosaic, this is. Oh, well, this this is the, um, the these are the the sampled cones. I see. Uh, here, mm -hmm. but um, I wasn't showing you them as the, color the way this way is color coded. I see. Okay. And here you can see that they're mostly L and M uh -huh. cones, and uh -huh. yeah, there's a there's a, you know we can zoom in a little bit. Mostly L and M cones. There's occasional. Uh, S cone in here somewhere, but so so this is um, the cone mosaic, and this is in the central part I of the. Are we uh, supposed to also see the image on the cone mosaic? Or? No, this okay. is just the mosaic. The mean the mean absorptions show you the image. So these cones that are down here, you know, they're mm -hmm. getting a lot of photons. Mm -hmm. You can see lots of things. I mean, there's a, there's a whole bunch of cones that are mm -hmm. excited. It's about three hundred sixty four thousand mm -hmm. cones. Um, that's the cone density. Mm -hmm. um, this is the field of view of this thing. Uh, somewhere around here, it actually says what the. Uh, oh, yeah, the aperture in this region is about two microns across for the cones. And, and um, you know, you can look at a time series of something like here. Here's something, you know, if the eye, as the eye moves around, you can see this thing is kind of moving back and forth. Mm -hmm. So if you look at a cone right over here near the edge of the specularity, mm -hmm. Getting bright, dark, it, bright dark. That's right. It, it's going to have. Uh, I can plot its time series, mm -hmm. and um, you know you can you can see it really. It, you know when it's in the dark part, mm -hmm. it's much lower, and here it's you know four times brighter. Mm -hmm. Probably I, I should have picked one a little bit closer. Um, you know, like over here or something. Well, that one was. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, I don't know. You know, some of them. Are going to have um, you know, big swing, big yeah. swings, yeah. Okay, and then uh, you know, suppose you were saying, well, okay, fine, that's what comes out of the center mm -hmm. of the um, near the fovea. Suppose we want to go to the near periphery, and so instead of the, putting the center at zero zero, we're going to put the center of the mosaic two millimeters, two times you know ten mm -hmm. to the minus third, two millimeters off to the side. Still the same field of view we'll generate still a little eye movement sequence of 50 frames, and we'll go and we'll compute it. And now you can see we, we have fewer cones. You know, this, here there's only 18,000 cones. If we, uh, you know, from that previous image, that same field of view, there was 364,000 cones. Just because you moved into the periphery. Exactly. We moved six degrees into the periphery mm -hmm. over here by putting the center over there. Mm -hmm. And uh, the other thing that's changed, you know, here were the number of uh, absorptions. So you might ask yourself, well, how many absorptions do you think we're going to have? Um, I'll look at the time series in a, in a cone kind of over here again. 
and uh, this is actually something that you know surprised me to just remember about the the cones. Um, you, you know, in the fovea, the the cone apertures are about two microns, but when you move out to um, six degrees, the apertures get close to nine microns. Hmm. So uh, actually, the number of cone excitations oh. go, even though the the cones are bigger. Uh -huh. And so the number of cone excitations goes up. I see, and that's ten to the fourth, so you could actually exactly, see it's bigger, it's, exactly. Think. That's ten to the fourth, and that's you know two hundred and fifty, and and that's you know ten thousand. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's really quite a big difference in in terms of literally how much how many signals you're picking up with mm -hmm. each of those cones when mm -hmm. you just move a few degrees off mm -hmm. to the side, mm -hmm. and. Um, and so you have fewer cones, but they're getting a lot more uh, photons, and um, you know the, the the pattern will be a little bit different. That's interesting. And um, you know here you can see the LNM cones uh -huh. more clearly because you know they're, right. they're bigger and right. they're a little more widely spaced and so forth. So this is a tool to go think about these things, and and uh, you know some of the papers that we'll write will build on these analyses. Mm -hmm. Um, but mostly for this webinar, we just wanted to tell people um, what you can calculate. Yeah, mm -hmm. things they can calculate. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for talking this through with me. Sure.